what is seen as ambush marketing? As you indicated, ambush marketing generally takes two forms. And um, in terms of South African legislation, both forms can be or qualify as, as criminal offences and constitute some form of unlawful competition. Now, the first form of, of ambush marketing by way of association is generally when an unauthorised party, an undertaking or an enterprise, tries to in some way through a representation, a communication, an advertisement or by whatever means of, of media, uh, try and create an association with that sponsored event uh, without having contributed any, any sponsorship fees, trying to benefit from, from that publicity value which the sponsored event has acquired. Now the, the second form of ambush marketing by way of intrusion is more the, the, the type of conduct where a party may, for example, try and give its own trademark, even if it's a registered trademark, it's, it's the, 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 the name of its own business, that exposure at um, sort of a place where there might be an enormous uh, concentration of people, such as a stadium on match day. Um, what, what that aims to, to prevent is for a party like that to not be able to obtain a special promotional benefit um, through the exposure or the use of its own trademark without having consulted and um, Can you for give example, us an example? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. please Absolutely. go ahead. Yeah. Ambush marketing by way of association, for example, that's where you will use, and if I may use FIFA as an example mm. with the 2010 World Cup around the corner, for example, any of the trademarks or the insignia that designates the event. Now you if you use, for example, the, word, the, the, the words World Cup 2010, which FIFA has registered as a trademark, uh, the argument can arise that you are trying, through the use of that, that term or phrase, trying to associate your business with the World Cup and, and mm -hmm. uh, really benefiting from, from its publicity value. On the other hand, by way of intrusion, is, for example, where a business will arrange for people to hand out flyers around Soccer City, for example, on a match day, mm. giving its, its, its own business, its own trademarks, um, that exposure, that concentration of people benefiting from that, mm. that um, publicity value of the event. So it's, it's really where you try and force yourself, your own business, in and, and, and attempting to, to gain that promotional benefit from, from the protected event. Can I interrupt with yeah. two things? About the first one, this whole idea of uh, using the words that are trademarked, does that apply to every, every broadcaster, for example? Because they're not writing the words, they're saying it. Are you n prevented from seeing it in print? and hearing someone say it? Well, saying it, you know, th there's, there's, there's been a lot of queries Because you didn't do that. a TM when you said that just now, no, so I'm really worried about <laughs> it. <laughs> we might be troubled. You know, one of the requirements for, for infringing a person's trademarks are that you have to use that, that trademark without permission, obviously, which I don't have, um, in the course of trade. Uh, now, th you know, that's uh, w the, 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 the qualification is also that you must be sort of in a position where deception or confusion is likely to be created. Mm. Now, through that, in just discussing it, reporting, I, I don't think it will qualify as using that, that protected mark in the course of trade. You know, I'm, I'm not um, trying to associate anything with the World Cup here. We are just having a, a relaxed discussion on it. So I, I think some of the people go a bit far in the way that they think you know, what you allow to do and what you're not. Mm -hmm. At the moment that you try and use it to benefit your business mm -hmm. and, and uh, create that association, that is where it can, can become problematic. Let's look at intrusion. And let's say, I mean, that normally happens at the event. So yes, there's legalities and there's repercussions post the event, but the damage is already done. That's true. You know, th uh, there's, there's no closed list or an exhaustive list of examples of what would constitute ambush marketing, either by way of association or intrusion. Um, there was, in fact, a recent judgment in South Africa where FIFA took on um, a South African business, and that was held by the court to be uh, ambush marketing by mm. way of intrusion. If I can maybe just give you the example of that what, what, what happened there. Uh, a fast-moving consumer goods company with lollipops um, Obviously, their own trademark was applied to the packaging, but also on the packaging, they used the numerals 2010 and mm. in the zeros sort of representations of uh, the South African national flag and elsewhere uh, representations of soccer balls on the packaging. Now, the argument at the end of the day, and the court agreed with this, was that the use of those combined elements 2010 with the idea of South Africa denoted mm. by the mm. use of the flags right. and the soccer balls brought to mind it 
well, directly or indirectly alluded or denoted the protected event. And the court held that that was ambush marketing by way of intrusion. Yeah. I've got another one. Uh, you talked, you use a very good example of uh, people g handing out flyers outside mm. a stadium. The question I want to ask is how much of the territory, what's the radius outside a particular stadium that a, an official sponsor like those that participate in the World Cup uh, uh, own as their territory? Because I could just go to a bus stop five kilometers away where people have to get off and then walk the rest and hand them out there. Is that still part of their, mm -hmm. uh, their space? Do they own the airspace all around the stadium? How far do they own it? You know, there's, there's no one size fits all mm. answer to this. It will really depend on the specific stadium um, and, and it will differ from, from stadium to stadium. Now what they've managed to done, and this is with the assistance of the municipalities and municipal bylaws, they've, uh, FIFA has managed to, to secure this, this clean zone almost I, I, uh, that, that, that they refer to around all of the stadia where there are no um, unauthorized economic activities allowed um, but that's really very very um, strictly enforced yes. and sort of a, a good security measures and so on um, that, that are um, established there. Now using your example of moving just five kilometers up the road you know it, it will depend on the circumstances um, and, and it will de depend on what they're doing. Mm. All that FIFA can do with, the, with, the, with a clean zone around the area is to stop other people from actually coming in there and doing whatever else, but it will not, um, it, 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 it doesn't mean that they're not still able to just go over the five kilometers up the road and still prevent those mm -hmm. people from, from doing whatever it is that they're doing, if obviously it is unlawful. I mean, they're not unduly obstructive, they don't want to try and prevent anything that is lawful, mm, mm. but they just want to sort of rely on their rights and, and prevent what, what might harm them, the reputation of the World Cup and obviously the interests of their sponsors.